Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today I'm going to be dyno tuning my EF Civic. So this car, <clears throat> you guys have been following along. Uh, we had some wiring issues with it and uh, ended up putting a new engine harness and jumper harness and rewiring the cabin harness ECU plugs and ended up fixing pretty much all the wiring issues related to the engine. So. <clears throat> now the car is running completely code free. Uh, it has a brand new distributor on it. I have a set of Hunter Tune Flex style injectors in it. And uh, yeah, we're just going to tune it pretty much exactly how I got the car uh, now that the issues are fixed. So when I first initially got this car, it didn't run or it ran very poorly because the fuel pressure was actually set at 100 psi. So when I'd flip the key forward and try to start this thing, it would just kind of spit and pop and sputter and it wouldn't actually like start up fully. So what I did is I checked the fuel pressure and with this aftermarket fuel pressure regulator, um, it was set way too high. So there's a spring inside of this uh, fuel pressure regulator, which regulates how much uh, pressure needs to go past that spring to open to return back to the tank. And it was just too tight and it had a set of precision uh like 750 cc injectors old style injectors and they just could not open with that much pressure behind them so i lowered the base pressure down to 40 and installed some hunter tune injectors and now it runs great so i did previously street tune this car um in the last one of the last videos i was out on the street with this thing and i just threw a quick little tune on it i uh, didn't really do a whole lot of tuning but anyways as I was saying my camera battery died but I came prepared today and I brought my extra camera battery uh, kind of sucks here in Wisconsin it's all snowy and cold outside so the camera batteries definitely don't last as long um, but so to go over this setup one more time it is a b16 um, I'm pretty sure this is a low compression build they put low compression pistons in with H beam rods and it has a GSR cylinder head with, I believe, Brian Crower turbo cams. I have not verified this, uh, but it definitely feels, at least on the street when I was doing those pulls, it felt like it has some sort of camshaft in it. And I don't know if this combination is really going to work that good, so I'm not expecting big numbers today. Uh, just more or less an experiment and to show you guys what changing some parts later can do. So like I said, we're gonna tune it with what it's got. And then I actually did get a new turbo kit. I got a new turbo manifold, a new turbo and wastegate, and I still have to get an intercooler for it. But for the most part, I wanna see what this is gonna do versus, you know, like a, a setup that I would normally run, a top mount manifold, a VS racing turbo, stuff like that. So. Um, this is an EMUSA log style manifold with a Garrett, I believe it's a GTX 3071, 76. Not exactly sure exactly what turbo it is. I'll know more when I pull it off, but I know it's dual ball bearing and it's a genuine Garrett turbo. So I'm gonna try to maybe sell this turbo after I'm done with it so I can recuperate some of the money from the new turbo kit that I bought. So, if anybody's interested in this turbo, uh, maybe we'll rip it off when I'm done tuning, but we'll see. It does have a manual boost controller on it, like a Hallman style controller, so we'll probably adjust some stuff with this. Uh, I don't really know how crazy I'm going to go with this setup. Uh, without the boost controller, it makes like eight pounds of boost or something like that. And maybe we'll check out the camshafts to see if they're zero or degreed at all. So we may check that out because it does have an ATI dampener on it with all the timing marks. So, yeah. I already installed BKR7 spark plugs in this thing quite a while ago. It has like an eighth a tank of pump gas and like the rest of it's E85. So it's probably like an E60 mix of fuel. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, it does worry me a little bit about pushing this setup later because I see a blue head gasket, which is typically a Felpro. And Felpros, they work, but uh, really high boost, they don't. So, yeah. My ultimate goal with this car is like a 450 wheel street car. 
maybe 500, 550 at the track, and uh, get it in the tens. Hopefully, come springtime when we can go racing. It does have an Omni four bar map sensor, and I'm gonna be tuning it on Honda S300. Like I said, I already got a base map in it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hunter talks too much. Let's, uh, let's do a baseline pull with this thing, see where we're at. I'm gonna get the laptop plugged into it, get it fired up, warmed up, and uh, we're going to do, we're just gonna run it with the tune that's in there that I did on the street, see what kind of power it makes, and see how we can improve from there. Um, see how much difference dyno tuning is going to make on this thing. All right guys, I got the dyno synced up, ready to go, and I got the log, the logger on the Honda data ready to go too. So I'm gonna do a baseline run, we'll see what kind of power it makes, uh, and then I'm gonna show you the tune that I have in it after I do this first run. We'll see what she makes. A little rich uh, before VTEC. After VTEC, it was like 11.8. So air fuel is not uh, too far off. Let's see what kind of power we made. 263. And I didn't touch the tune from the last time I drove it on the street. And you can see this thing's actually got a pretty flat torque curve all the way across. Um, we have a little bit of a dip when VTEC hits. So we may have to raise that a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna do a back-to-back -back run real quick. So I'm going to do this. We're gonna do one more run and I'm gonna spin it to the rev limiter. She definitely got a little angry up top. Uh, I don't know why. I didn't really spin it that much higher. I spun it uh, 8,500 instead of, uh, I think I got out of it at like 7,850 or 7,900 the last pull. The last pull. Uh, we did make 10 more horsepower, 276, but we lost power everywhere else after doing that back-to-back -back run. You can see the, the lower blue line is the one we just did. It made more power because I revved it a little higher, but it didn't really want to rev. Like, it did not want to keep going. I gotta air out the shop a little bit, open the door. Um, so, I'm not really sure. Um, I did feel this on the street, like, up top, it just like, it just gets super anemic, and uh, it doesn't want to keep revving. It doesn't want to keep making power. Um, even though like the power curve is not plateauing, it just like shuts off up top. So typically you'll have peak power and then you'll flatten for a little bit and then you'll die off. But that almost like seems like valve float, what just happened. At least that's what I think. I don't know, it acts like it, it seems like it might be floating the valves at really high RPM. 
What do you guys think? What do you think it was doing right there? The air fuel was like 11. It wasn't uh, like super rich. Uh, I'll double check the tune. I'm gonna bring the laptop here into the office and we can uh, we can go over some stuff and see what the hell's going on. All right guys, so we are currently looking at the VTEC fuel map and uh, I don't think we're running you know too much fuel or anything up here. I have it tapering. The fuel is slightly tapering out as it goes up. And uh, this was right before it started sputtering and I was starting to pull a little fuel out. Um, and it's not, I don't think it's a fuel issue of what just happened. Timing, we're not really running a lot, um, 21 degrees or so at eight pounds. And if we look at our data log here, let me uh, go back to this so we can see some ignition timing. Yeah, about 21 degrees and about eight pounds of boost. Um, another thing that you can see here, I'm gonna try to zoom in with the camera, is up top where it started to fall on its face, you can see on the log, it just goes flat. Uh, it doesn't really, you know, have the little squiggly in it. It just goes flat. Same thing with speed. Uh, usually you get this just from like the wheels turning and stuff like that. You get a little bit of fluctuation in the speed sensor. Uh, but right when it laid over, it just went flat um, without the squiggly. So I don't know what there is to say about that. If it could be valve spring related or maybe valve lash. I I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe it's something we can look into. <clears throat> It also could be that this turbo kit is kind of choked up for this setup. Um, and I, that's what I'm thinking it is because the camshafts that are in it and everything like that, it can't breathe through that log manifold that well. Let me turn the TV down here. Um, so like I said, the log manifold is definitely a big restriction on this thing, especially with the camshafts. If it had stock camshafts in it, it probably work fine and not have any issues. It also could be spark breaking up. I don't really want to, I don't think it is that because I gapped the plugs down to 18 thousandths and it has a brand new distributor on it. Um, and it doesn't really sound like spark break up. It just sounds like, Bleh! like it just like, it just chokes up. And uh, you know, that's just kind of how it is. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna try to clean up the timing, see if we can add some timing. Sometimes on more inefficient setups, they'll take more timing. Uh, at least that's how it is on V8 stuff. Uh, I'm assuming four cylinder stuff probably would be the same, I don't know. And with having E85 and stuff in it, I think we'll be okay to, to trickle in a little bit of timing. And I'm also going to trickle in <coughs> some timing on the non VTEC side and pull some fuel out. So our fueling for non-VTEC gets rich uh, in the middle here. So I may pull out, you know, 5% of fuel in the middle here. And then I'm also going to add some timing. So this timing, like I said, it was just kind of chucked in here for the low cam and high cam. I put some something realistic in here for high cam. Uh, but the low cam I didn't really touch and it's super conservative like super conservative. I'm saying like eight pounds of boost we're running uh, Like 18 degrees at five grand and before five grand. I mean 3500 rpm. We're making 13 degrees at timing only so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this ignition map and kind of show you how I do that real quick uh, at least this is how I do it. You don't have to do it the way I do it. I'm just telling you how I do it. All right, so I did want to come on here real quick and just tell you what I thought after the fact of watching the video uh, again. Uh, with me being in the car, I wasn't able to really see a lot of what was going on outside. I did see some smoke and uh, just I, I just heard the car lay over on that last pull. So um, after looking at it and seeing the exhaust soot, out of the wastegate and out of the downpipe uh, just tells me that this is a classic uh, example and what we've ran into quite a bit tuning a lot of these Hondas is I like to call it exhaust reversion. So it's when there's so much back pressure in the manifold that 
it just like blows the boost right out the exhaust kind of thing and that's kind of what it looks like um the exhaust stream coming out of the pipe seems pretty good and then like right at the end it just like hoofs like it seems like there's eight pounds of boost coming straight out of the downpipe so um at least that's what i think and also i did want to tell you guys about the timing with hondas i'm going to be showing just some basic you know a quick little way to throw some timing in your car um at least what i do on e85 if you guys are on pump gas don't do a lot of this just go to a tuner but uh, v8s or like ls cars uh they tend to um take more timing when they're inefficient a four-cylinder car i said that I said this the wrong way, but four cylinder cars, from my experience personally, the more efficient the setup, the more timing it'll take. Um, where on a lot of V8 LS stuff that I've done, more inefficient setups will take more timing. So a less efficient setup on a Honda is not going to want any timing, and a more efficient setup on a Honda is going to want more timing. So. If you got choked up exhaust and shit, putting timing in it's not gonna not gonna help, and it's probably just gonna hurt shit. Um, where the opposite tends to sometimes be true on a V8. Don't know why. Um, I think that's just what I've noticed. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do some timing map stuff here and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. We don't really ever want to run less than five degrees of timing at any point. Uh, I don't care how high the boost is, you know, if it's 40 pounds or whatever. Um, I'm actually going to set our lowest timing value to 10. We don't ever want to run less than 10 degrees. So I'm going to take the whole map where it's a value of less than 10. And I'm only doing this right now on this car because A, I'm not running a ton of boost. And I'm just going to try to clean this up to try to get some more spunk out of it down low. Even though it's really not bad as is this thing spools really fast um with this turbo on it i mean just for example here yeah see it goes flat right here too at 4200 for some reason but 3500 rpm we're already making two pounds of boost and by the time we hit 4500 rpm we're making six and a half pounds of boost um we don't fully we don't hit full boost i mean seven pounds is pretty much the wastegate spring so i would say you know 4600 or so we're hitting full boost and that's on a low compression b16 you know if this was on a b20 or uh, even a gsr or anything like that this would be even sooner um and it does boost creep a little bit uh creeping up to about eight pounds by the time we hit eight grand so i'm going to clean this ignition up see what we can do with it um like I said, I'm going to take any value anywhere on the map that's less than 10 degrees, and I'm going to make it 10 degrees. So like all of this, you can see right here, 9.4. I'm going to start there, highlight all the way over, and set all this at 10. Uh, this one needs to go up to 10. 10, okay. And then I'm going to make our timing down here what we would normally run on the VTEC side above, say, probably five grand. So at wide open throttle, we could probably run 26 degrees. And then I'm going to interpolate up to 10. So we're going to interpolate vertically. And that's going to give us uh, the timing that we are probably going to want to run. So I'm going to do that throughout the map here, and I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to do it over here too a little bit, and uh, I'll show you what the end result looks like. We're going to um, possibly raise VTEC a little bit because it is going kind of flat on the dyno right when VTEC hits. So I think if we raised it to like 5,500, so if we go on uh, VTEC here, you can see currently we're engaging at 5,200. So if we raise that to like 55 or 5600, uh, it might clean up that mid-range a little bit. So I'm going to clean this up. I'll get back with you all in a minute. Um, 
So we're going to see what this uh, timing map does for us. Uh, it's a little bit better than it was. I say we probably added like two degrees everywhere by doing this. Um, and you can see over here I have some kind of screwed up timing over here. This is just because the car idles a little funny. And I, I do some tricks over here to get the thing not to die out and to just idle a little smoother. So I have some timing that's like all over the place right here. But just ignore that and we're going to focus from like this point forward. Uh, that's what I was just playing with and adjusting and smoothing. So um, say wide open throttle, zero pounds of boost is this column right here. Uh, typically on an all motor setup in VTEC you can run up to like 28 degrees so at five grand and above on the low cam side I made it 28 degrees and above you know our lowest points is 10 like I was talking about so 10 degrees everywhere here I can kind of use as a reference and I take that 10 degree spot right here and I just drag all the way down to my 28 that I set at wide open above five grand and I hit interpolate vertically, and it makes the timing go uh, increase from 10 to 28 throughout these columns evenly. So it's nice and smooth. Uh, there's no herky-jerky timing, blah, blah, blah. And I did that pretty much with this whole map here. So, you know, at five grand on the normal stuff, at four pounds of boost, I'd probably run like 26 degrees, but I'm going a degree less on the uh, low cam side just because you don't really want to run as much timing down low you can get away with running more timing up top down low and lower rpm is where the engine's going to detonate easier so if you ran say fucking vtec timing like i have over here and you have 26 degrees at lower rpm it's gonna knock like a bitch it's gonna ping um, and it's not going to work. You have to, that's why like on the VTEC side, uh, you can get away with running kind of flat timing all throughout, um, because you're really only adjusting above five grand anyway, or wherever your VTEC point is. So, uh, I'll probably add some timing in here too. I'm probably going to add two degrees overall to this whole map. Um, and that'll bring us up to probably 23 degrees at seven or eight pounds instead of uh, 21 where we're at now. So we're gonna see if it responds to that, see where it responds, if it's gonna respond to this timing, if it'll respond to VTAC timing. Uh, yeah, we're just overall just changing timing on this next run, and this is probably long-winded, but some people might appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna add two degrees here. We already did the low cam side. I kind of smoothed this out a little bit, see if it picks up down low. Uh, yeah, so. Hopefully that makes sense a little bit. Uh, this is just a starting starting base. This is nothing uh, cut and dry. Uh, this is obviously something that should get you going uh, for a timing map. Uh, obviously, some cars will take a lot more timing. Some won't take a lot. You know, some cars like 20 degrees at fucking 30 pounds. Some don't. It's all that's where the dyno comes in. Is we'll see if this makes power. On my setup, it might make power. On your setup, it might make power. On my setup, it might not. You don't know. That's why you gotta you gotta have the dyno to kind of know if you're making improvements or not. It's kind of hard to tell, you know, a few degrees of timing on the street. So we'll see what this does. I'm not gonna rev it as high, just because uh, it got a little angry. Yeah. Anyways, let's get back to the dyno. that did uh, it felt a little better in the car but it wasn't uh, a lot better it kind of overlaid what it did the last pull let's see here try to zoom in on the dyno curve to 
show you where we picked up, where we lost. So, I made the timing smoother down here. It's definitely not as like up and down. You can see the red is the last run we did and this is after I adjusted the timing. And you can see how much smoother it is down here. Uh, and we definitely picked up a big chunk in the middle. The green is the new. Um, let's only look at horsepower here. So you can see the purple is our new run where we picked up. Uh, that was mainly from the VTEC adjustment. And then down low, you can see that it's a hell of a lot smoother. So that's like literally a straight line. We have to adjust some stuff in here to get that a little better. Uh, compared to this, which is a little bit wavier of a curve, that two degrees didn't do anything up top. So you can see up here, they're like the same. Overlaid once VTEC engages. So the timing I put in it uh, on the VTEC side didn't do anything. Um, and this setup is just a little choked. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Um, right when VTEC hit it hits, it has a little bit of a lull. So I might have to see if it's going rich or lean there. Right when it cracks. So we'll do one more quick. I did notice a little blow by out of the valve cover. Nothing uh, serious, but probably just needs a, uh, a catch can or something on it because I don't think it has one at all. And the throttle is so sticky on this thing, I gotta freaking fix that too. VTEC hit, it went like 11.8 to 11.6 maybe. It was pretty damn smooth. We honestly might have to raise VTEC even more to get that to smoothen out completely. So I might try that on this next run. We'll see what kind of power this one made. Uh, but it all looks pretty good. Seven pounds of boost. Uh, I probably need a head gasket because temp's creeping up now after I did that run. This thing typically runs like 175, 180 degrees. And I just got done doing that run back to back and it's at 190. And I think I was saying it with the Felpro gasket, it just kind of scares me a little bit. Um, and they have an overflow on it and it was uh, putting some coolant in the overflow. So it, it might need a head gasket at some point, but we'll uh, probably upgrade the turbo kit before we put a head gasket in it. <laughs> Because honestly, with the inefficiency of this thing and how it, it's just kind of choked up and doesn't even want to rev and everything like that, uh, putting a good turbo kit on it honestly might make the head gasket seal. Believe it or not, a setup that's got a lot of back pressure and it's kind of choked up will put more pressure in the cylinder too. So efficient horsepower is usually reliable horsepower where this I don't even want to freaking keep running it because it's just not that great, you know? So made 247 that run, literally just overlays every pole. So that was this run. And you can see where our timing starts to make a difference above six grand, but I mean, you're pulling teeth here. I put two degrees in, it's picking up like a horsepower or a half a horsepower. It's not, uh, not really nothing to ride home about. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to clean up that little lull right there, which raising VTEC will do that. Uh, and that's probably gonna be it, guys. Our best number of the day was 276. I'm gonna shut the garage door real quick. 
we'll chat a little bit more. I actually think the cam timing on this thing is pretty dialed. Uh, it was kind of hard to tell on the street because the cars, it just feels anemic. Um, you know, kind of choked up. It makes boost really fast. And I feel like if it had a properly sized turbo manifold, even with the same turbo, it would, uh, it would rip a, a lot better. So I'm gonna save all these runs that we did today. And you guys know seven or eight pounds of boost it's on. And we're gonna see if the setup makes more power on the same boost with a different turbo kit. So another thing too is this intercooler is so small. Come on camera, focus. This intercooler is so small, it doesn't help this case at all. Um, this is the overflow on the car. Uh, I don't even want to turn the boost up, guys, just because I don't feel comfortable pushing this thing. I'd rather have a better turbo kit on it before I do that. Actually, it's not really adding a ton into the overflow anymore, so we might be all right. It just might be the fact that the radiator is getting a little heat soaked. Uh, just because there's no cooling fan on it. And this radiator is so big on this car, it's like a Volkswagen one. I don't know, whatever, Corrado or something, radiator. I got it like this. This uh, radiator is so large that it takes a while to get heat in it. And then once it finally heat soaks, the temp can go up. So if I had a cooling fan on it, I'm sure it would never go above 180 degrees. But sometimes Hondas like to run 195, 200, and they make more power that way. But yeah, so we're gonna say goodbye to this old turbo kit and uh, you guys let me know um, what you think of this video. If you want me to do more like it, uh, like I said, we didn't really pick up a ton of power down low from doing that timing adjustment that I did, but it, it did make it a lot smoother. So smooth is fast, smooth is efficient, uh, and smooth is reliable. So you gotta try to remember that. The smoother you can make your dyno curve, the smoother uh, you can get down the racetrack, etc. It's all going to be better in the end. If you have a herky-jerky setup or you launch herky-jerky and you're not smooth coming out of the hole, you're just gonna break parts and it's just not gonna be a good day. So hopefully uh, that kind of teaches some stuff uh, today. I don't know, we'll do more tuning videos coming soon. I wanna get my Integra out here and do some tuning on it as well. Uh, maybe on some methanol. I think it'd be fun to tune my K24 on M1 using a normal ass wideband and gasoline air fuel. <laughs> We'll see what we can do with that. I'm, I'm kind of actually thinking I might do that soon. I just put a wide band in it and stuff. Um, I have some other videos uh, that I have filmed, but it's just been, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just been busy, you know, in my head, let's just say. So anyways, more videos coming soon. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Uh, I'm going to try to get back on making videos consistently. Like I said, it's just been a little tough lately to do that. I've been kind of down on myself for whatever reasons. Uh, but today I had some fun filming this video and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of this piece of, piece of junk turbo kit. This would work fine on a little street setup. This turbo kit would work fine with stock camshafts. But since this car has camshafts in it, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. All right, guys. <clears throat> um, I'm going to add this in here at the end because I said I would. Uh, so I pulled the turbo kit off of the EF, and I have the turbo sitting up here on the bench. And I did look up what this turbo is. It's a Garrett GTX 3076R uh, dual ball bearing. Uh, I looked it up on MAP Performance, MAP. And this same exact turbo sells for $1,349 brand new. Um, but this one is slightly damaged. Uh, the compressor wheel on it is a little chewed up. It's not unusable. I actually ran a uh, compressor wheel like this on my first 10 second hatch that I ever had. It was a GTX 3071, I believe. Journal bearing turbo, not the dual ball bearing like this one and it went 1050s. 
it ran out of turbo at like 450 wheel but yeah so if somebody wants to put a compressor wheel on this turbo i feel like it'd be a really good unit yet uh, because i do feel the bearings and everything like that are still really good i mean that's just me flicking my wrist so uh yeah and then the log and the whatever i'd sell this whole package to somebody if they wanted it i don't know shoot me an offer on it uh, like I said, I'd like to sell this setup just so I can recuperate some of the money that I uh, spent on the new turbo kit for this car. So, yeah, but I got it all off. Got the intercooler off, the turbo kit off, and it's all kind of sitting right here. So, yeah, I don't know. If anybody's interested, hit me up. I might post it up on Facebook. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. I can't wait to get the new turbo kit on. And that might be a video coming very soon. So keep your eyes peeled. And, uh, yeah, we'll see, see what we can do. If y'all made it to the end, be sure to leave a like. Uh, but I figured I'd also throw this in here real quick. Um, I really like what Young Static is doing with uh, his Instagram. He has, like, his normal Instagram account. And then he has a static service Instagram account where he sells parts um, and I think it would be kind of cool if I had maybe like a dedicated page or like a uh, I don't think it makes sense to do a YouTube channel for it but maybe like an Instagram page or a Facebook page for just stuff I'm selling so you guys could look and purchase stuff from me it'd be a little easier to uh, than me posting on Facebook and making videos or in, you know interrupting videos with stuff I'm selling just because um, you know to support this hobby and all these projects I got to make money or if I am not making money I have to sell so I have to sell stuff off to pay for the next thing to make a video on kind of thing so um, yeah I don't know let me let me know bleh, let me know what you guys think of that and uh, I was driving home and I got road rage and uh, also am throwing that in after this. Um, all right, so I just figured I'd throw this in here just because, uh, you know, I don't know if y'all live in snowy conditions at all, but it's winter time and uh, it snows and I just can't stand people that put other people in danger. And this is just like a random ass rant at the end of this video. Uh, if you guys want me to bitch more and talk more, just let me know. I'll gladly just rant and bitch about everything. Uh, but uh, I live in Wisconsin. It snowed today. Uh, a couple places got like six inches. Down by me, we only got like an inch or two. Uh, but the roads get slick. And uh, obviously when it snows, it gets slippery out. And I'm driving down the highway on the way home from the shop, driving under the speed limit. I was probably doing like 67 instead of 70. Um, and my car has new tires and it's it's a fairly safe rig but uh, this dumb fuck in a Buick Century behind me was riding my ass the whole fucking time on the highway from my shop to where he crashed and uh, he was just like in a hurry in his Buick Century and I'm watching him in my rear view but I'm not gonna change lanes when the right lane is doing the same speed I am so I wasn't gonna get over because a lot of times if you stay in the groove of the snowy road, the groove is warmed up. You know, the tires are driving on it. Uh, there's not usually snow in the groove, but as soon as you get out of the groove, uh, it's slippery. So if I were to change lanes, that's typically when an accident's gonna happen because in between the lanes, there's gonna be more snow built up. And uh, yeah, I just minded my own business in my own lane and I was doing a safe speed. For the conditions, I thought. Uh, so this guy in this Buick Century, the, the road, the highway goes from two lanes to three lanes. And right as soon as it goes to three lanes, everybody in their hot rods try to fucking pass people that aren't going fast enough in the original left lane of the two lane. So this guy, as soon as the three lanes opened up, he just dipped into that third lane and was trying to hot rod around me. And I was, you know, still minding my own business but I saw that left lane wasn't really used that much. And sure shit, he, he fucking spun out immediately as soon as he tried changing lanes. And uh, he, I look in my rear view and I was checking my mirrors constantly and I saw 
this dude uh, just dipped right across the highway, right in front of other cars that were also behind me. Um, and he, thank God, no other car hit him or hit him hard, I don't think. Uh, but I, I saw in my rear view him just sliding sideways across the highway doing 70 miles an hour. And uh, yeah, don't be an idiot because that shit, you kill people. And that's not, uh, you don't need to be in a rush because it doesn't fucking get you anywhere fast. Yeah, I promise. It never fucking gets you anywhere fast. Whenever I'm in a hurry, um, you know, yeah, you might save three minutes off the clock to get to your destination a little bit faster. Um, but the mindset of being in a hurry never gets you anywhere fast because you're going to be more scattered. You're not clear headed. You don't have your thoughts straight. Just don't be in a fucking rush and don't put other people in danger because of it. Cause that shit pisses me off. And I want everybody to be safe out there. I, I hate, it's like the third accident I've personally witnessed this year alone of people just being stupid and nearly killing other people. And it's terrifying when there's been nights I've drive, driven home from the shop and I've witnessed uh, cars completely engulfed in flames and it's just terrifying. Don't, don't fucking be that guy. Just take it easy. You know, if you're going to go street racing and go hot rodding, do it on a road that there's nobody around and be smart about it. Don't be fucking splitting lanes. You know, if you got a designated spot to go get on it, that's what I do. I have designated spots to now. Uh, where I get on it. If I get on it on a city street, I feel so guilty afterwards. I really do. Um, but yeah, don't be stupid. Uh, look out for one another. Have a great night and a better tomorrow.